My case said, my name is Greg Taylor, and by day I own a, a marketing company called TMC Interactive. And then by night, or whenever I can, I'm a freelance music photographer. So we're just going to have a discussion about music photography. And uh, this doesn't have to be really formal. If anybody has a question during my presentation, just raise your hand. We can just go like that rather than save them all for the end. So, so freelance music photographer means basically what I end up doing is I'm either, I'm either hired to shoot shows, or I seek out shows that I want to shoot, and then I speak to the PR agency or the band later about them licensing my photos. So typically in music photography, most of the money is made, if there is any money to be made, is through licensing rights. So <clears throat> a couple of requirements for, to be a music photographer. They're really simple. You have to have a love for music. That kind of goes without saying. A passion for photography. First of all, is anybody, any photographers here? I know Sheila, one, two, three, Chuck. I don't know about Chuck, he's lying. But. And then there's musicians, any musicians? We have Dave over here, Chuck, awesome. <laughs> so if you have love for music, passion for photography, you need to have a lot, a lot of patience because uh, it's incredible just how situations change and how you know, act, situations change on stage by the minute and policies change, procedures change. Just because you're approved to shoot a show when you show up doesn't mean you're going to be approved. You know, tons of things can happen. You have to have a sincere love for working with people, and that's kind of sarcastic because uh, that's probably one of the more difficult points of everything. And a tolerance for the unexpected. So how I got started in music photography, kind of interesting. I've always been a music lover. I've always had a love for photography. Always been an avid concert goer, and when I started going to concerts, cameras were allowed in all venues. So I can go with a 35 millimeter camera at that time, and I can shoot almost any band that I wanted to. And I'm talking, I could go to, you know, I could be a 17 year old kid show up at Madison Square Garden with a professional camera that they would call it nowadays, and they would let me in, no problem. So. It just made sense with my love of music and my love for photography and going to all these concerts for me to take photos. So some of my first music photo shoots, you know, they really ran the gamut between bands at the local VFW back east. There were always shows going on at the veterans halls or uh, somebody's basement. Or then I would end up in big arenas and shooting shows and just taking as many photos as I could. So this is one of the very first concert shots I took. It was in August of 1989, dating myself a little bit. And it's at a glorified coffee house in New York City. And then two or three months later, I shot this. Jerry Garcia, The Grateful Dead in 1989. So it runs again between me shooting a bunch of dudes that I don't know and me shooting one of the biggest rock and roll icons ever. And I shot this sort of 35 millimeter lens. Uh, my film was ISO 1600, which, uh, I don't know, anybody who shot 35 millimeter, they know what I'm talking about. So <clears throat> here are some of the particulars of music photography. To me, music photography is all about contradiction and improv. So basically, I go into every situation knowing the rules of photography and knowing what I need to do, but then when I get there, I kind of just wing it and trust my gut and do what feels right. And uh, that's where the improv comes in. Just because, you know, John Coltrane said, you know, the key to playing jazz, I'll paraphrase, the key to playing jazz is knowing music theory, and then when you get out on stage, just do what feels right. I kind of take that approach to music photography, because half of the times, if you don't do what is instinctual, or what just kind of breaks the rules a little bit, or tweaks the rules a little bit, you're not going to get the shot. The other thing I'm going to say, and I'm going to throw this out here now, admittedly, I am one of the least technical photographers that's probably ever been granted photo access to an event. Which means I'm not one of those photo nerds that sit down and read the latest, you know, Shutterbug or you know any of those magazines, stuff like that. I don't keep up with the Joneses on all the latest technology. I just go out there and really, I just shoot photos. I mean, and that's one of the most liberating things that you don't have to be super, super technical. You don't have to be have the greatest equipment. I'll tell you right now, I shoot with one of the lowest end cameras that there is on the market. Where I spent most of my money is invested in the, in the lens because the lens is where you get your shots. So here are the big four of music photography, uh, by my standards anyway. 
Know your camera and know your settings. It's super important to know your camera, know your settings, and what works for you. But then, I'll throw it out there again, trust your instincts. I can't say that enough. Know the art. Know the band that you're shooting. Be a little bit familiar with who you're working with. Respect the light. Photography is all about light. And light is your best friend, and light is your worst enemy all at the same time. <clears throat> and then I'm going to go into, at the end of the presentation, everything else that no one ever tells you about music photography. So here we go, know your camera, know your settings. It's really important to know how does your camera react in specific situations. What f-stop works best with what lens? What ISO should you set your settings at? You know, these are all things that I can't sit here and tell you, like, you know, Sheila, if you're going to go to the rhythm room and shoot a band, put your camera on ISO 400 and use a f2.8 lens and blah, 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 because who knows, that probably will not work when you show up. What lens should you use? You know, I don't know. What lens are you most comfortable with? You know, to me, the lens that I use the most is a 24 to 70 millimeter f2.8. I got the most bang for my buck when I bought it. It's a low, uh, low f-stop lens. And if I need more light, I do have a 1.4 uh, fixed lens that I like to use. <laughs> Again, what combination works best in poor light? Whenever you're shooting music, you're always dealing with poor light. Unless you're shooting outside, most of the time the light will suck. And that is gonna be your biggest fight. Whenever, any time you're shooting photos, you have to know the light and just work within the light that you're given. I shot shows outside where it's super sunny. I, th I go into it thinking it's gonna be an easy photo shoot. It's probably one of the harder ones because it, you, know, you have a tendency to overexpose everything. And what are your baseline settings? I go into every single show and I set my camera, I do some quick tests, and then I set my camera at the same settings every single time because I know that they work for me and I know that I'm super comfortable with them and I know what type of adjustments to make from that point. So I use that as baseline zero. If I need to go up, I can go up. If I need to go down, I can go down. But I need to have a starting point that's constant. So I always have baseline settings. Then develop your own style. <coughs> The more you get comfortable with these things, the more you're going to be able to de develop your own style. I think that finally I developed my own style of photography. If you saw any of my stuff that were hanging up here, they kind of all have a similar style and flavor to it. And I'm going to be honest with you, in the beginning when I was shooting shows, I ripped off other people's style. You know, a couple of people who were super influential to me, of course, was Jim Marshall, who shot the famous Johnny Cash San Quentin photo, and then another photographer from New York City named uh, Glennie Friedman who shot lots of punk bands and uh, really, really captured and uh, documented the hip hop movement in the early 80s and 90s. So baseline setting, where's your starting point? What settings do you trust the most? For me, this is where I start every single show. I have my camera set at ISO 800. I'd love to push it down to 400 if possible because then the graininess will go away. <coughs> but most likely I'm gonna stay at 800. The lens is a 24 to 70, like I said. My shutter is 1 one twenty fifth, um, and the aperture is f 2.8. That works for me. That just, it works, it's tried and true. It took me a long time to perfect them. Please, if you want to go out and shoot music, steal my settings, go for it. Also, you know, something else, you know, sticking in like the gang fight motto and whatever is, if you ever see a photo of mine that's published or that you like or anything hanging up, if you want to know how to copy that, you know, I'll definitely, I can send you the EXIF settings and tell you exactly how I shot it. I have no problem with any of that. So here's one of the music photography contradictions I call them. Know your settings, know your camera, know your equipment, but when it's showtime, just go shoot photos. I mean, that's what it's all about. We're going out there to shoot photos. Just trust your instincts. I can't say that enough. Now let's talk about knowing the artist. It helps you to get the shot if you're familiar with the band or the artist. There's tons of times I'm hired to go and shoot bands that I have no idea what to expect. So I don't know what I'm getting into when I say yes. So what I end up doing is, <clears throat> I do a little bit of research. How many band members are there? Is there one guy on stage? Is there five guys on stage? Am I shooting a band like uh, I shot Rusted Root where there's nine guys on stage? You know, who are they, where are they, how many are there? Where do they stand on stage? Who's the focal point? Who's the main icon of the band? You always want to get a shot of those guys, but it's really important to know who stands where and what they do. Do they have any, what are their movements or signature mannerisms? 
you know, Mick Jagger has a uh, signature one. Uh, Roger Klein, who I've shot a whole bunch, has signature moves. Uh, everybody has something that's kind of like their signature stage presence and whatnot. That's really what you want to capture. And then what images do you want to capture? I try to go into every photo shoot thinking, okay, it'd be really cool if I can get a photo of this. So I try to preconceive the photo. You know, and you hear about a lot of uh, landscape photographers, they do that, they go into the shoot, you know, kind of with a premeditated photo in mind that they're trying to make. I try to do the same thing. And I try to do the same thing with music, but at the same time, you know, it's, you, you have to be, you have to adapt a little bit because you're not always going to get that. I find that going to YouTube and watching bands, watching their videos, watching, you know, live videos helps immensely so that I can learn all these things about a band that I don't know about. It also helps if you've shot the band once or twice before, you kind of know, you know, they're professionals for a reason. They've perfected their stage mannerisms and their movements with the same songs over and over. So when you hear one of those songs, if you're, you know, you have a photo pass when they're playing one of those songs, you sort of know what to expect. That helps a lot. Here's a photo I shot of Willie Nelson. <clears throat> and his signature stage presence is trigger his guitar and then the red, white, and blue neck strap. So I wanted to make sure when I shot this a couple years ago that I was able to capture that. And here's a punk show I shot at Yuck Attack Room. And knowing that it was going to be a punk show, I knew that the guy was going to go in a crowd or something was going to happen in the crowd, so I was positioned to get the photo. I didn't know I was going to be this close because I'm pretty sure I got kicked in the head right after I shot this. And then here's a photo of Mickey Avalon, who's just a, he's a hip-hop guy. He always has a wine glass on. He's just, I don't know, he's a dirty bone, actually. but <laughs> He always has a wine glass. He's always toasting the wine glass. If you can see here, there's like wine stains on his shirt. So I wanted to go in there and capture something iconic like that. So stage light. Light is the photographer's best friend. Light is the photographer's worst enemy. So at the same time, you need the light to make the photo and to adjust your settings. At the same time, the photo, the uh, stage lighting on in music venues are terrible. It's always terrible and it's not conducive to photography. And you know, I thought before I, I was able to shoot with photo passes and like big venues. That the bigger the venue, you know, the better the lighting would be. It's actually, it's actually worse. The bigger the venue, the worse the lights are because I'm so close to the stage and the lights are so, so big that it has to illuminate like US Airways Center or Madison Square Garden, something like that. So the lighting is really set for the guy, you know, 75 yards back or 50 yards back versus the guy who's right up against the stage. So that was like one of those things that I, I had a, it was trial by fire basically. I had to learn <clears throat> how to deal with that. But because I had my baseline settings, I was able to conquer that because I knew where to start. So not all sets are the same. So you could shoot one band, the opening act, and then you can shoot the headliner, and the light will not be the same for both of them. During the show, red light is always the end. Red light is the concert photographer's enemy. It is the hardest thing to capture a good photo when it comes to red light. And it's just because it's how the sensors react to it. So here's an example. I shot All Against Me at the Marquis Theater. And they had these cool, like, white hot lights over there that were on almost the whole time. So I said, okay, this is going to be a breeze. This one is going to be easy. So I shot these guys for a while. And then the headliner Silver Sun Pickups came out. And they played in red light the whole time. You see the same lights over there? Well, now they're red. So my assumptions were totally incorrect. And this is probably out of, I don't know, gosh. Whenever I shoot a show, I probably end up shooting about five to 700 photos. This is one of five photos that I like. So here's another music photography company. When other photographer, photography experts say, don't shoot directly in the light, I say, don't listen. Because sometimes you need to shoot directly into light to get enough light to make the photo. So it's one of those things like, just because everybody says this, and just because everybody wants you to do it one way, you don't have to listen. And that's where the contradiction and the imp improv comes into music photography. Because you, you need to do what you have to do to get the shot. Okay, this is kind of fun. This is what nobody tells you about music photography that I'm going to tell you. 
Rarely are your photo passes ever exactly where they say they will be. I've shown up dozens of times and the band manager, the PR agency, the stage manager say, don't worry about it, your name's on the list, you'll be a will call, you have a photo pass, blah, 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 blah. I show up, nothing. And <clears throat> they have no idea who I am, nor do the box office really care who I am. Because they're there for paying customers, they're not there for somebody getting in you know, for free and getting in there to do a job. So, I have a specific folder on my iPhone called Photo Credentials, and I have everybody who ever grants me access, I have their email address, I have their cell phone number, I have the point of contact. Without that, there's tons of shows I would have never gotten into. Some bands are really cool, like uh, I got left outside for G-Love, but the stage manager is really, really cool. They let me in uh, just by showing them an email. I got left outside for Rusted Root, and they were busted jerks, so we had to get somebody out of a bar in New York City to call the stage manager to say, no, no, this guy's okay, come in and shoot. Even if you have a photo pass, security guards still have plenty of rules for you to follow. Just because you're there and you, you have special access doesn't mean that you have, act, you have carte blanche to do whatever you want to do. Their biggest rule is no drinks in front of the, in front of the rail, so you can't even bring, you know, sometimes bringing a beer up there would be nice, but you can't even bring a bottle of water. They just won't let you, and honestly, they don't care who you are. They're there to keep the band safe and to keep the crowd safe. They could care less that you have a job to do and what you need to do. And oftentimes they're, they're, they're jerks. Some security guards in some venues even have weird rules like marquee theater. You're not allowed to shoot the crowd. There's oftentimes that I like to go, and, uh, you know, being in front of the stage and everything, shoot out at the crowd just to kind of capture things. But I got an argument one night with a, guy, with a security guard over that, and it's their policy that they will not allow you to do that. <laughs> Many times the other photographers you're working with are less than welcoming. They're there to do a job too. It's very competitive, very cutthroat. Lots of times they're not very nice. Sometimes they are. And typically you don't even know who they are until you guys all show up there because you know we go in front of the rail right by the stage You know, as soon as the lights go down. So we're all hanging out with our friends and doing whatever. Then we show up and a whole bunch of people have cameras and they're all fighting for a position, which is typically in front of the lead singer's microphone or lead guitarist's microphone. And they just don't care. It's not a very collaborative environment. It's not very cool. If you break something, they're not gonna lend you, lend you, you know, and they really don't care. They're like the honey badger. They don't really give a shit. <laughs> then the best way to build rapport with the people on stage is by making sure that they don't notice you. So I'm a big believer of any type of photography, unless you're doing commissioned portrait work, I like to be, I like my photos to be seen, I don't like to be seen. Nobody is there to see me. Nobody is there for me, nobody cares. You know, I shoot music uh, photos with a bunch of people and their main thing is, they love to stick the camera right in the performer's face. <clears throat> I just think that that's bad form. I think that's a quick way of getting not hired again. And it's pretty distracting, because again, the band and the artists are there to do a job. They're putting on a show. They don't care about you. They don't care. They didn't hire you. The lead singer of the band, the lead guitarist of the band did not hire you. Their PR company did. The venue did. Their management did. They don't care. The pay is poor unless your photos are licensed. This is one of those things that everybody thinks that just because you go and shoot tons of shows that you make lots and lots of money. The money is made with photo licensing. So if you have an opportunity to get a photo pass you know, from a PR company or from band management, the best way to get paid is to negotiate licensing rights to it. And a lot of times that's the, one of the ways that they will actually grant you a photo pass is by you talking to them about the licensing rights and say, you know, in two weeks when I process all the photos, I'll present them to you if you like anything. Maybe you can use it for merchandise, album covers, tour posters, whatever. That's where a lot of the money is made. Fans in the front row are not there to watch you. This is one of the things that I really had to battle with, and being, uh, I don't know, kind of diplomatic with it. You gotta imagine, people pay good money for seats, or they come into general admission venues early so that they can stand right up against the rail in the front couple of rows. Well, little did I know that there was only a photographer running back and forth right in front of them. So the, the best way to do things is, I kind of, walk around and I kind of see who's gonna give me problems or anything. And those people I'll try to talk to and tell them, hey, I'm just here to do a job. 
I'm gonna be out of your way in a minute and try to be as respectful to your space as possible. You know, a lot of times in front of the rail in the photographer section, there are little seats. So if nothing's happening or in between songs, I'll try to sit down. Or once I get a bunch of shots, I'll try to review shots so that I can sit down and uh, just kind of stay out of their way. A photo pass is just that, photos only. So a lot of people think, well, <clears throat> you get a photo pass, you go backstage, you get to hang out, you get uh, all free food and drinks, you get to kick it on the tour bus, you get all this stuff. Not true. I'll tell you what, I shot Muse at US Airways Center, and after my photo pass expired, when the time allotted was over, they actually kicked me out of the arena. I didn't even get to see the whole show until I went and saw them a couple days later in Tucson. So a photo pass is just that. You, you can only take photos of it. It doesn't, you know, it's funny because once I'm done shooting photos, everybody will ask me, can I have your pass, can I have your pass? And I say, sure, I mean, go for it. I mean, the couple of passes that were in the corner down there, are really, I only have like four passes like in my desk from like all the you know, 100 shows that I've shot because I typically give them away, you know, as a souvenir to somebody, but it doesn't do them any good. It, it's, it's really funny trying to watch these people try to sneak backstage with the photo pass. Here's the biggest thing that everybody is blown away when I tell them. When you get a photo pass, most venues are three songs, no flash, no exceptions. You only get to shoot photos for the first three songs. And typically, if you see some bands, the first three songs are like, eh, they're kind of going through the motions, getting warmed up. You know, I would rather shoot the middle three songs or the last three songs. But photo policy and venues are three songs. I'm not ever allowed to use flash. I've seen photographers use flash and get escorted out. And they don't care if they're from Spin Magazine or Arizona Republic or anywhere. They just don't care. So why do I do it? The pay sucks. Sometimes it's you know not a lot of fun. I get hassled. Well, I do it because I get to experience things like this. You know, I shot, this is me, uh, this is a photo of news that I shot. I get to do that for three songs, at least I have the best seat in the house. It's a ton of fun. I do get to make some contacts. There are some business opportunities when it comes to the licensing. And really being a music junkie, what else would I rather take photos of? So, that's about it. Any questions? Hmm. There we go, Scott. So you shoot a punk show. How do you make sure your, your equipment doesn't get damaged? How do you protect that? Oh, that's a good question. Well, bring a friend. Use a buffer. <laughs> Typically, somebody bigger than you and somebody who's not afraid to get into it with somebody and just kind of keep the space. But, you know, the biggest thing is just kind of knowing your surroundings. If other people respect what you're doing, and, like, if you try to make friends with people who are around you and say, hey, I'm just going to be here shooting a photo. Let me jump right in here for a minute. I'm going to be out of your way in a second. A lot of times that works. Sometimes it doesn't. And you just kind of gauge the crowd and you gauge the situation. <clears throat> Every situation is different. And if you need to take another strategy or even back off if it gets confrontational, then you just do. Are, are you shooting mostly the musicians and, and bands that you enjoy or you do anything? Oh, that's a good question. So the question was, do I shoot bands that I enjoy or will I shoot anything? You know, it's a mixture of both. You know, like I said in the beginning, like seeking out photo passes and stuff, sometimes if it's a band that I really like, yeah, I'll go and contact them and, say, and then try to get a licensing deal with them. Otherwise, you know, sometimes I get called for bands that I've never even heard of. You know, and those bands typically, if they're good, I'll stay. If not, you know, it's just three songs, I'm out the door. But uh, it's a mixture. I like to shoot bands. I've discovered a couple bands that I've never heard of before that hired me on, and now they're some of my favorite bands. You know, so it's a, it's a mixture, it just depends on, on the situation. But it's always a plus if you get to shoot bands that you really like, just because that's just what makes the job what it is. Yep. Do you treat it as a business, do you have insurance? Do I treat it as a business, do I have insurance? No, I don't treat it as a business. I don't really need insurance. I mean, the only thing I would need insurance for would be maybe my equipment, and uh, I think the expense of insurance would be would be too would cost more than what it's worth. Do I treat it as a business? Yeah, I guess I do. I mean, if I'm going to pursue a licensing opportunity with people, then I guess I have to on that end. But do I treat it as a business? As am I a professional when I'm there? Absolutely. When I'm there, it's my job for three songs. 
I don't go in front of the rail and drunk. I don't go in front of it, you know, and act a fool. I don't go and seek autographs. I don't go to meet any of the people. You know, I do get to meet some people sometimes, but the majority of people I never even meet. I just <clears throat> kind of walk away. I end up meeting their management and talking business with them. So, yes, I treat it as a business from being professional, but no, I don't put any type of real financial investment towards it. Okay. So one of my favorite movies is the movie Almost Famous, and in that movie he's falling around a band, but he's writing about them. And they say, don't get too close to the band because you're going to be writing obje you know, objectively about them. I'm kind of curious what you think, if comparing your, your profession to people who write about music, and if there's ever a time where you're like, liking a band is actually detrimental to you taking photos? or well, That's a great question. So I guess the question is, is there ever a time that taking photos of a band is detrimental to your relationship or to your like of them, right? Well, or if liking them is, is a or problem. Or liking them is detrimental to yeah. taking photos. Absolutely. I've gotten too close to a couple of bands and there's certain uh, photo opportunities that I'd love to publish that I can't or I won't out of respect to them because they're my friends. It's like if I go out and take a photo of my friends acting a fool and doing this or that, you know, I'd use my better judgment, my best discretion on where and when I would want to post it. So it does get in the way sometimes, but at, but at the same time, it opens doors if you do get close to some of them. You know, um, as far as the almost famous experience, I mean, you know, a lot, that stuff doesn't really happen anymore. <laughs> I mean, like, you know, Motley Crue, 1989, like backstage, you know, strippers and blow and whiskey, like that stuff doesn't really happen anymore. If I do go backstage and see anything behind the scenes, it's typically, you know, a guy sitting there chilling with his wife and his kids or whatnot. So, I mean, you know, it's, I, I guess there's a, uh, I guess it is a detriment at the same time, but it can be a help if you do it the right way. With uh, licensing, is it usually, uh, you process the photos, you show it to them, they buy a couple just one time, or do you have um, times where it's recurring, like every year they renew or something like that? It's both. It depends on how you negotiate and structure the deal. But some things can be, uh, you can negotiate some licensing deals for it to be this, this, and this only, or to be run for a certain amount of time, and then any, if it, they want to use it again after that time, you know, they have to re-up and renegotiate the contract. Uh, Every band is different. Every situation is different. You know, I will process the photos and post them either online or send them a disc of low-res stuff that's heavily, heavily watermarked, you know, so that they can't steal it. People love to steal photographs. I don't know why. Uh, I guess they're cool. But, yeah, so it's it's a mixture. It all depends on the situation. Did I answer your question? I don't know. Okay. Luke? I'm confused. That if they're paying you, to go take photos, how are those photos not theirs? It, it sounds like they're yours, and now you can do any negotiation you want and uh, put them on iStock photo or whatever you want to do with them. Well, everything is, if you're paid to go and shoot something, there's a contract that has to be signed. And within the contract, it says what I can and what I can't do with the photos. And then there's also typically a time frame for it. So like Muse, I had to sign, like there was like a five page contract for me to get this shot, basically. So, I signed the contract, I read through it, I couldn't do anything with the photos, including publish them, for a year. You know, this was shot last, this was shot like uh, April 09, something like that. So I couldn't do anything with it, because they had the right, basically the right of first refusal, whether or not they wanted to use it, or they didn't. So, after that, they are my property. Uh, not to get too much into photography copyright, but any image you produce is yours and you do own it. Basically, if they pay you to show up, they're paying you for your professional services of showing up. And it's a very, very small appearance or showing up fee, you know, based on you know them having the right. They're basically paying you to shoot the photos and then for them to have the right to buy them later. Dave. Favorite venues, least favorite venues. Uh, well, favorite venue. I don't know. I like shooting like favorite venue. I guess locally would be something like Yucca Tap Room. I mean, just because it's fun, it's 
You know, a lot of my friends are there. The lights are actually decent for a small bar. Where is least, it? least favorite. What's that? Where is it? Yucca Tap Room. It's in Tempe. It's on Mill and Southern. Oh, yeah, yeah. <laughs> uh, Celebrity Theater is fantastic to shoot photos because they, because the, it, it's a theater. I mean, they really take care of the lighting. And the stage is set. The stage is set in the round, so there's a round ring of lights, which helps from every angle. Least favorite venue, probably Marquee Theater. Um, the venue's okay. The people there who run it are not so okay. I always have problems when I go to Marquee Theater. I could walk in the theater with a wristband that says photo and still get a hassle for bringing a camera in a door. There's just a huge disconnect between management. I'm really interested in going shooting photos at the new venues that are opening in Phoenix, like Foundry on first. And then there's another one just a little north of that. I forget the name. Okay. Do you need to love music to be a music photographer? Do I need to love it? If I, like, Isn't that like all the most famous things? Do you need to be in love to write a love song? Yes. Love song? Okay. I'm kind of obsessed with this movie for some reason. <laughs> I don't know why I'm on this track today. But I'm curious, like, do you find that like, do you, uh, photographers that are just coming up, you know, just don't care it's a job? Or does really having a love of the band or music like make your photos better? You know, I think that having a true passion and love for music makes it better because what I try to do with photos that I take are I try to capture the emotion of kind of what's going on out there and what's going, what they're putting out. And, you know, bands that give more to their fans are more fun to shoot. You know, guys like, you know, Roger Fine who puts it all out on the stage. Guys like, uh, uh, bands like Cage the Elephant who are jumping all over the place. You know, anybody who is really putting out an emotion and putting out passion, they're easier to photograph because then I feed off of that. But, uh, you know, I would think that in order to be a decent music photographer, I'm not even talking good music photographer, you'd have to like music. You know, I don't know. Well, I don't like ballet, so I wouldn't be interested in shooting ballet. I mean, I Anyone else? Has uh, this expanded to where the band wants you to do their, do like a photo shoot for their CD covers, things like that, or... Just yeah, in a bunch of different shoot. situations it has. Those are most, mostly local bands versus national bands. Mm -hmm. And that type of stuff comes with building a rapport with the band. Not being the guy who sticks the camera in their face. Not being the guy, here's one of my pet peeves of music photographers, amateur and professional alike. When you go to a show and you shoot 500, show, 500 photos and you post 50 of them or 60 of them on Facebook, nobody cares. You know, why would you want to show anything that's less than your best work? Pick five that are awesome versus 45 that are decent. But anyway, uh, that all comes through the relationship of knowing the band and working with them and then knowing how you work. And a lot of it is them respecting you for what you do. And you get that respect by respecting them and their space for what they do. If you're building rapport by them not noticing you, how do you... <laughs> you like send them photos like, hey, I shot this yeah. of you last night or something. Yeah. And typically that stuff comes from, you know, very rarely does a front man or, you know, a band member say, I want this photographer. You know, we don't care. It's just part of their schedule. They're showing up here to get, you know, their photo shot. That all comes from the rapport with the management. And the best way to build rapport with the management is be honest. Do what you say you're going to do. All the principle and ethics of business. Be honest, do what you say you're gonna do, deliver things on time, deliver your best work, you know, and then you start getting noticed, and then you start getting referrals from other, you know, other musicians, other bands. Okay. Any more questions? Okay, thank you, Greg.